to another commentary done by Diggity. Upper left-hand corner, we have I Am Jiraiya starting as the yellow Zerg. Bottom right-hand corner, we have Master Ray starting as the very stylish. I don't think I've seen this color amongst Protoss as of yet, and it looks so good on Protoss. That is the teal green Protoss. I'm going to call that the royal green. Royal blue's a thing, right? That's actually, it's, this is going to be a completely side thing, which has nothing to do with this. Colors are funny. Look up uh, Orange is Weird on YouTube, by the way. It's a trip. It's really fun to watch. But additionally, royal blue was... So blue and purple didn't used to be differentiated, apparently. So the royal blue was because royalty used to wear purple, and so that was the royal purple, I guess? Something along those lines. So anyway, yeah. Something in the midst of Greek. It's weird how when you say something, like you're... We create differentiation in colors with... I'm getting totally... This isn't even philosophical. This is what, like meta something? Anyway, Master Ray setting up with a pylon at the natural expansion. Between these two, this should be a really exciting match. You have Jiraiya, who is a more macro-oriented player. He's one of those guys who will sit back and play solid. Master Ray, I think, is one of those players who also oftentimes wants to uh, sit back and react to what his opponent's doing and does so very, very, very well, even though he does it at lower APMs. Looks like we are seeing an over... I, nope, is that an over pool? No, we're just seeing a nine pool straight up. This is on Wavelet, by the way. So pretty large map. I'm not sure I like the nine pool opening on Wavelet because it is such a large map. But Master Ray scouting upper right, finding nothing. Actually, sorry, scouting the three o'clock location first. Now making his way uh, across map. Is Wavelet a two? I thought I didn't. Hold on, I'm gonna do a map reveal. I didn't think Wavelet. No, Wavelet has spawns in upper right. So Master Ray doing a weird maybe check for cheese at three o'clock. I'm not sure what that was about. I'm not sure if he's as familiar with this map. Is what that kind of indicates. But now he's going for a cross map spawn uh, scout. And he is, in fact, going to see this. And this might actually... So Master Ray has opted to open up Gateway. I was going to say if there was a Forge opening, this might pay out. Now he's going to want to probably play a little bit more defensively because despite the long distance with the spawns, having initial Zealots out, um, this is a wide area to kind of cover. So you want to have more Zealots than normal to sit back and blockade. He's already placing that Forge before opting for a second out. The drone for I Am Jiraiya checking up right-hand corner. It's going to move. Now the nine Zerglings out. And it's absolutely critical that you do not let these Zerglings into your base. That can oftentimes be the difference between winning the match and having to deal... Uh, basically winning the match... Oh, wow. Eight Zerglings dedicated from Jiraiya. So he's really going for it right off the bat. He does have that natural expansion hatchery that Master Ray didn't really uh, bother to harass. Let's see if he brings his pro back. So second out produced. It's going to want to get in the stalwart line. And a first cannon in production, but the Zerglings should be here before this first cannon, so this could be the des the deciding factor in this match right now, is the Probe and Zealot blockade. The Zerglings covering, they see the cannon, they're going to go ahead and back off. No, now they're going to start working on that gateway, get a little bit of gateway damage before that cannon warps and try to tempt that Zealot out. Jiraiya needs to be careful though, because if he ends up losing... Front door open a little bit, Master Ray inviting him in, the Probe's coming back, the Probe's getting additional kills though. And four Zerglings trying to attack that probe that was coming back to home base. It looks like he's going to back off now. So I will say the opposite of this is I like having the Zerglings out as far as the nine pool opening, putting a Protoss in a defensive position. So how do I put this? Nine pool, I like it as a solid opener against Gateway first, I suppose. But against Forge first, I feel like it just, yeah, anyway. I won't get into the mechanics of that. Master Ray going to go ahead and drop his Nexus behind this. Master Ray, or sorry, Jiraiya going ahead and grabbing that 1 o'clock uh, hatchery before his additional hatchery even finished. Does have gas up, but he's not quite mining yet. Now starting to transfer those probes across. We'll see how this settles uh, from here. Master Ray grabbing his gas, grabbing his cybernetic score, and putting that pylon along the edge. So one critical thing here is scouting information, because uh, that this is the advantage of 9 pool in this in the current meta, is if you can keep your your Protoss opponent in the dark and not let them know whether you're going 973, whether you're going for that uh, four hatch lap over, whether you're going for five hatch Hydralisk or anything along those lines, if you can kind of keep them in that uncomfortable space where they don't know how to react to what you're doing, it oftentimes uh, gives you the game. And I feel like that is kind of the thing for Protoss in the mid game is, is finding a way, either sneaking out a probe or forcing some zealots forward to check out the natural expansion, uh, something along those lines, doing something to get eyes on your Zerg opponent so you can kind of cut corners to get small advantages in the mid game. And it's just, it's critical. Master Ray doing a nice transfer right as that Nexus is finished. And Jiraiya doing a pretty good job of keeping, uh, you can just see how you can uh, see these Zerglings out on the front. They're doing a pretty good job of looking. Yeah, good reaction time on Jiraiya's part. Four Zealots now moving forward. Let's see 
if Jiraiya is going to dedicate troops to this, it looks like he's actually, rather than even going, going for a Hydalus den, he's just gone four hatcheries straight up uh, and, for, and plopped an evolution chamber. This is, I have not seen this build before. And I'm wondering if, I don't think this is all in Zergling. Zergling speed is going to finish. Additional Zerglings are being produced. But I assume this is going to lap back to five hatch Hydra, but gas is no longer being mined. So this is possibly a Zergling all-in build. And more Zerglings being built. Yeah, being fielded right now. Four Zealots moving up. Now, here's the thing for Master Ray. Is he going to be able to figure this out? And if he can get into the main, he might be able to. The Zerglings moving across. Because he might think that Jiraiya is just building a lot of Zerglings in order to react to his Zealots and play from there. But all indications at this stage is it is just going to be four hatch all in Zergling. With the Evolution Chamber behind to potentially deal with Corsairs after the fact and maybe get some... I assume not get upgrades after this, but let's see if more Zerglings end up being produced. A fifth hatchery being planted up there. And gas is being mined again, but still no Hydralis then. Spines being upgraded, but still no Hydralis then. Did Jiraiya, has Jiraiya realized that he's skipped that? This isn't 973 at this stage. A flood of Zerglings making their way across. I'm wondering if that's just a... Uh, I'm kind of curious. Mastery doing a good job of sneaking that probe out to go ahead and get that additional scouting information. The Corsair is out. Overlord died someplace in the midst of this. I don't. This Corsair doesn't have the kill, so I'm going to assume it died on a cannon. Photon cannon warping into the main, which a little bit unnecessary for Master Ray. He didn't get that scouting information, so he's respecting the Mutalisk swap. But as he's as he's moving in with his Corsair, he might be as confused as I am, because here he sees that natural expansion. He's going to move here. He's going to see a complete lack of Hydralisten mutation to Lair. But, and there's the Hydralis Den. Wow, very late. So this is going to be a Hydralis Den that's going to be finished around the 7 minute 10 mark. Not that it's going to hurt Jiraiya all that much, but just, yeah, kind of odd play. And I'm wondering if that was a mistake or that's intentional. Um, probe still slotted at that 9 o'clock location, perhaps to do. I like what uh, Jiraiya is doing, just scouting out otherwise to see what's going on. Master Ray doing a pretty job pushing his economy. He's going to get weapons one without too much trouble. Continuing to build Corsair, which I like this play upon seeing not a lot of anti-air at this stage of things. Might as well get a handful of Corsair. I feel like the more modern, the soup, the hyper-modern, um, one of the hyper-modern options in this matchup is actually go ahead and get five Corsair out. Potentially get that level one weapons. It looks like that's about halfway finished. And make sure that it's kind of like the counter vision battle. Make sure that the overlords and vision for your Zerg opponent are cleared in the mid game so that Hydralisks don't know where to respond to in their defense of these three expansions and then start flooding uh, Zealots out while you're taking your own expansion and just let them be kind of a roaming, roaming army out on the field. We are seeing an, a second evolution chamber. We've got three hatcheries uh, here, two hatcheries here, and this for six. Uh, Looks like Overlord speed is being upgraded. That can be critical in dealing with that Corsair Assault. Looks like Master Ray has a handful of Zelts that have already been produced, already working on uh, Armor 1. He does have that Citadel of Adun at that bottom corner, is working on Zelt leg speed as well. So getting everything prepared to kind of go for that mid-game bust. And again, look for those Corsairs to start hunting Overlords in the midfield when that happens. It looks like Jiraiya kind of skipping this rather than planting Overlords out in the field. He's keeping them back. And playing, again, more defensively, this is his style. He wants to get in a macro position. But I like the Zerglings kind of planted around to provide vision. First of all, deny expansions, but also kind of try to keep an eye on Zealots in midfield. So kind of, rather than exposing the Overlords out in the field and actually moving... I like this as well. He's moving this drone out to go ahead, potentially take another expansion. But he's got a Hydralisk alongside, just in case there was something here as a distractionary attack. So he's going to go ahead and grab, I assume, grab another expansion here. Um in that corner to push that macro game before Master Ray is in a position to go ahead and grab yet another base. Master Ray now moving out with six Corsair. They got plus one weapons, which is going to make them very, very dangerous. But again, Jiraiya, in kind of more of a defensive stance, has left all of his overlords at home base, kind of in the protective custody, protective custody of a lot of Hydralisks out on the front. You've also got that Spore Colony at the main... I don't see any overlords. This is potential for uh, drops or things like that. But now we see a big flood of speed zealots, plus one weapons, flooding out in the base. And this is where Jiraiya, again, I like this. He's moving up that Zergling to try to figure out where they're headed. The Corsairs are to the northern location. This is not enough Hydralis to defend this. A sunken colony going down. They're going to pick off an overlord right as it's spawning. There's no Dark Templar alongside. But as that's moving forward... Unfortunately, diving into the natural expansion where there's a huge SimCity and a lot of Hydralisks to engage. 
And I think as a result, a lot of these Zelts going to get cleaned up. The Corsair is diving on the Overlords overhead, able to take at least one down, working on a second. That second and second, a second, 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 more flooded out. So a bunch of Corsair getting wiped out. More Zelts getting uh, killed on the front. So dr not a lot of drones getting taken out, but Master Ray making those Corsair pay for themselves in wiping out a huge amount of Overlords overhead. I think that was, I wish I could get the flat kill count. Stumbling on my own tongue for a minute there. Not sure I wanted to say second so many times. But getting... What was that? That was a huge amount of Overlord kills. So there's five, six at least. And I think there might have even been seven kills. Still hunting for additional Overlords. Jiraiya currently in the red. So a nice amount of economic damage done there. The Corsair is still alive looking for areas to hunt. Looks like the Zelts in the meantime cleared out that drone or any attempts at taking things at that location. Some Lurkers moving forward with the Hydralisks for Jiraiya. In between this and this is kind of the the problem though as far as a, a counter operation is is if you don't immediately take your base as all of this is wandering out there are counter attack opportunities as you've expended all of your zealots but we do have high templar with size storm upgraded some zealots at that natural expansion jiraiya moving to the six o'clock location to engage this with a bit of a skeleton crew but this might force a cancellation and are, is this enough of an attack force to go ahead and clear that out no observer this is the thing with the Corsair investment, is the robotics facility somewhat late. This first observer, not on the field to help deal with this lurker. And so that's going to be a further delay. So all of that economic damage that was done in Jiraiya's base, getting undone a little bit because of this cancellation at the 5 o'clock location, forcing that nexus down. Another grouping of Zealots and High Templar are out on the front, but you can see they're a little bit concerned about a counterattack situation, so they're not going to secure that 5 o'clock base just in case Dry was macroing up and going to assail his front door. There's still the Corsairs, and this is where the Corsairs would be a help, just to go ahead and look and get eyes as far as what's going on there. And critically behind this, Jiraiya, in his macro style, is also doing a fantastic job with upgrades. He's got level 2 weapons, level 1 armor, and I do not believe that Master Ray... Well, sorry, level, uh, Master Ray has level 2 weapons, level 1 armor. Usually, Protoss has the lead in this. So having equivalent units that hit uh, fairly hard, it's going to be challenging for Master Ray to go against the flood of units that Jiraiya is fielding. So now he's moving out. He has that Observer. He's going to clear out that 5 o'clock base, but a, let's see if Jiraiya can group his units. He doesn't want to send them in piecemeal. There are High Templar exposed... A, a couple empty storms there, I think in panic by Master Ray. Some of these Hydralisks did get wiped out by that, but not kind of the grouping. You can see another empty size storm right there. So if nothing else, Jiraiya was able to force an expenditure of an, a massive amount of size storm for not a lot, but that size storm hits heavy. Looks like the Corsair is going to find that 9 o'clock base uh, going up for Jiraiya behind all of this. But Jiraiya, I still feel like forcing Master Ray to engage with these troops in the front. Master Ray still hasn't grabbed a third base. And a lot of Psy Storms have been dropped. So if Jiraiya, he has options here. He can go back and play more defensively, wait for uh, another macro force to grow. Master Ray is in a quandary here. Because does he go ahead and it looks like he's going to go ahead and set up and take his additional base. He's not in a position where he can defend that base and attack at the same time, however. And he, he's dropped a bit of map control and expending all of those Psy Storms. Hydralisk sketching, I think, a Corsair that was in the middle there, working on another Corsair. Uh, at that corner, 9 o'clock base going up, 12 o'clock, or sorry, 1 o'clock base also going up for Jiraiya. So Jiraiya taking a, and he's, as far as the raw worker count, this is not the situation you want to be in where you're even in workers with your Zerg opponent. A huge amount of lurkers morphing in the background behind this. And Master Ray, yeah, behind economically, just grabbing his third. He's starting to continue to pump. Where's that second forge? Because there has, okay, it's the second forge is just hidden under vision right there. Uh, behind all this. Let's see if he can keep up in the upgrade game. Looks like he's got eight gateways behind all of this. Still sitting at that... Eight, sorry, nine gateways technically because he's still got that gateway on the front. Usually I don't count that one because it's usually not up. And Master Ray being sneaky behind this. He's taking a big risk and just going to go ahead and plop down that three o'clock nexus. And he's going to see if he can hold that essentially. Jiraiya... We'll end, so what will that be? That will be 5 base versus 4 base. So kind of trying to sneak something and hold a lot of territory. Jiraiya planting a lot of lurkers to go for more of that soft contained style we've seen out of uh, guys like uh, Hawk and Striker down the line. Some Zerglings flooding forward. The Corsairs moving forward, finding the Hydral's force to the north. I don't think Master Ray wants to force a fight right here, but he is kind of motioning to that location. He's got a lot of territory to cover. 
a lot of territory to cover to defend all this. And I don't think, again, I still don't feel like he's in a position to run up for attack. This Dragoon going to get obliterated on top of those initial lurkers. And I think, let's see if Jiraiya, yeah, he's already got Hive Tech up. Let's see if he continues to press this. If he can throw in the Adrenal Upgraded Zerglings, um, that sort of tech, it just ends up being a very difficult situation. The Corsair running forward, another one getting picked off. Decent size storm catches a handful of Hydralisk, but I don't see a lot of High Templar back here. There's only these two High Templar, sorry, some joining them, but these are a little bit low on energy. So we got, what, four or five storms to deal with a lot to the north. More Hydralisk piling through, so Jiraiya is starting to to pick up the gear and shift more into I'm going to flat macro mode. There is a 20 supply lead for Master Ray overall. He has dropped a huge amount of cannons and left kind of a skeleton crew to defend this 5 o'clock base. The Zerglings, you can see, trying to sneak through. Hydral is pressing forward and trying to poke at things in the meantime. The Zerglings not going to get a lot accomplished here, aside from uh, knocking down a little bit of shield. And probes are starting to transfer up to that 3 o'clock location. The Hydralists trying to press from both directions. So Jiraiya trying to kind of distract Master Ray and poke the defense. But Master Ray holding this army firm in the in-between location and now looking to initiate. He's going... He's moving his army to the center of the map. He does have a handful of cannons uh, to engage this, but starting to move forward, it looks like he's going to catch a, a Zergling right there, and it looks like he wants to go ahead and attack this soft 9 o'clock location. There is a Nidus Canal. There's a lot of Lurkers and Hydralisks that might be able to pin that army in, but the Lurkers are not yet morphed in. This army repositioning, and let's see if Master Ray is going to be able to wipe this base out before Jiraiya is able to respond. A lot of reinforcements sweeping down there to engage. The Nidus Canal being worked on. Nothing gets through that Nidus Canal. But here's the thing, if he pushes in with that army, that army could end up trapped here. It looks like leaving the High Templar behind to go ahead and storm across, yeah, trying to bait some nice storm situations. And oh, this would be a beautiful storm situation. Oh, brutal storms on that high ramp. So Master Ray baiting the attack and then storming the bejesus out of everything, able quickly to take out that 9 o'clock base before Jiraiya is able to respond. That Army is somewhat pinned in. A lot of observers getting picked off. One still stands. However, let's see if that one gets picked off as well. It's getting pushed out of the front. It gets picked off. So these lurkers going to kill a lot underneath this. Master Ray still has another exit opportunity, but his army is in fact pinned in. The lurkers just barreling in to wipe out the rest of this. So let's see. Master Ray currently has a supply lead. Let's see if that holds after he ends up losing all of these attack force, which uh, are just stranded, inevitably going to die, trying to reinforce with what he's got to the north to deal with a potential counterattack from Jiraiya. Overlord's pressing forward just to make sure that there aren't any additional observers in the midst of this. So he's just trying, I think he's just going to try to buy himself some time with this army. Continuing to, yeah, Jiraiya being kind of careful and pressing the rest of this in. Even in supply, as things stand, still anybody's match. As far as upgrades go, level 3 carapace, level 2 spines. The Zerglings are adrenal upgraded, I believe, at this stage. Didn't keep a strong eye on that. Actually, maybe not, but they have that level 1. Yeah, they, they are. They have that level 1, which means they're going to be just chew through those Dragoons if they can get positioned to do so. They can chew those. They can absolutely devastate those Templar lines. These units just pocketing themselves in that corner, trying to stay alive. Lurker's still trying to deal with this. Observers with this attack force, and looks like Jiraiya having trouble... Microwing all these positions, losing additional overlords to the north. Master Ray, these Corsairs have been absolute heroes this entire match, doing a fantastic job of clearing those overlords out mid-game and getting wins where he can. Another good size storm over that Hydralis branch, and Jiraiya doesn't... Trying to flood more units out to the right, not very cohesive between all of it. And Master Ray doing a good job keeping his army together and engaging with the rest of this. He's got level 3 weapons, level 2 armor. The upgrade's just about even, so I think it's going to come down to who outmaneuvers who on this map, and it is turning into a fantastic match in that regard. The Corsairs working on those overlords, the Corsairs taking fire in the midst of this, they're wiped out, both observers picked off, that means the Lurkers once again going to be able to dominate this field, and that army is going to get grouped off and potentially picked off to the north. So these Dragoons pinned in, Hydralisks and Lurkers from underneath, and Master Ray, his standing army once again obliterated. Master Ray's main is dry. His natural expansion's running decently. He still got. He does have a defiler mound out. I should point that out, which is going to make these bases, particularly with just dragoons to support, somewhat more difficult to defend. Let's see if he go ahead. If he can switch over uh, to robotic facility. Master Ray is known more for his gateway play uh, through the midst of all this. <clears throat> so let's see if he has potentially if he has enough high templar, he can work through this. Two lurkers trying to drop. They only get one. Only gets one shot off before it gets obliterated. But it's going to force this army back. Some nice trailing side storms over those hydralisks. 
Dry continuing to pressure this into the natural expansion. He's throwing in some Zerglings without, looks like just a handful of Zerglings and Hydralisks towards that 9 o'clock base, but Master Ray able to pin through, and Jiraiya riskily, just assuming he's going to win this battle across this right-hand flank, or I guess this right-hand engagement, is taking that expansion, that upper right-hand base. In the meantime, the Zealot just kind of patrolling bottom left. They keep looking for some action between that Zergling and that Zealot, but Jiraiya continuing to press forward. Master Ray still with a 20 supply lead, but honestly, Jiraiya looking very, very fierce in this match, and I would not be shocked if he pulls this out, he's retaking that 9 o'clock. He's essentially functioning off three bases, soon to be four. Master Ray's main is out. He's basically down to two bases himself. And I'm looking for, yeah, Defilers to join the fray because a good plague or a, a backstab Dark Swarm uh, with some Zerglings could be all it takes. Master Ray being forced to really wants to get aggressive and try to wipe out some of these mining bases for Jiraiya, but... At this, oh, and he might be able to catch this base. Trying to slide in. Jiraiya moving up with a lot of Zerglings. There's a Dark Swarm to that, the southern location. There are storms to go ahead and engage this. Defiler continue to press forward. I don't know that Plague's upgraded yet. But through some nice side storms and positioning, a lot of this attack force getting wiped out. The Defiler sits there in a bit of mockery. And Master Ray going to go for this mining base. There's several lurkers in that minefield. Observers pressing overhead. The Hydralists, maybe if they can pick off the Observers, can save this. They're working on those Observers now. One observer, both observers escape. That's going to push the zealots away from this. The zealots mostly getting wiped in, and reinforcements sitting behind this to deal with the defilers and the reinforcements that are incoming. But it looks like those zealots were able to get wiped out to the north. Only a sunken colony was lost, maybe a handful of units. These dragoons remaining stalwart, but those dragoons are very, very vulnerable. Jiraiya potentially in a bit of trouble. This one o'clock base is very exposed, and this natural expansion very exposed as well. And I don't see reinforcements anywhere nearby. To engage this, several Zerglings being produced. There's still the Defilers that are hanging out underneath. Let's see if they wander up and get a plague. A Creep Colony in desperation trying to be grabbed. But this 1 o'clock base, so there's a Dark Swarm. That's not going to help with the Zealots. The Defiler wiped out behind that. The Dragoons trying to work on that. But Zerglings flooding in from the left flank. Able to engage there. The hatchery has been wiped out. There's ooh, great size storm to wipe out a lot of those Zerglings. The drones now flooding to that natural expansion in that right-hand side base. And Zerglings everywhere in this grouping. The High Templar trying to storm dr the drones. And the drones actually didn't even look like they cared. But catching a lot of the Zealots in their own attack force in the midst of this. The Lurker's taking a bit of damage. Then it looks like the rest of this attack force is going to be cleaned up. So Jiraiya taking a bit of damage. Yes, he lost this hatchery to that 1 o'clock base. But critically, Master Ray has not expanded behind this. And he's lost all of his attack. Basically, that was his army expended on the front. Jiraiya behind in supply. Let's see if he can grow that rather rapidly. Trying to get a Nidus Canal at his natural expansion. Looks like he's going to go ahead and rebuild that 1 o'clock base. Finally, Master Ray moving out. He's going to take this expansion. Would love to see this happening. Would have loved to see this happening in the midst of that last battle. Both bases still mining uh, pretty fervently. That's the word I'll use. With a purpose, the Zealot cleared out of that bottom left-hand base. A handful of that probe trying to march forward to maybe take this expansion. So he's dropping this and immediately moving out. Yeah, already planting a pylon to establish this and make it some form of split map at this stage of things. But it feels like it's a little late for that split map situation. A lot of Zerglings going. Plague is starting to be upgraded. And here Master Ray has even more territory to cover. In the midst of this, and I think he's what he's planning on doing is shifting to more of a shell style game. Plant the cannons, maybe get some robotics facilities back here, try to hold the territory. A flood of Zerglings making their way to the bottom left, and he's going to go ahead and counterattack while those Zer Zerglings are on location. Maybe re attack that one o'clock base. There's some Zerglings on standby. He's moving to the middle of the map. I like the counterattack situation. However, Jiraiya has eyes on this. The Zerglings clearing out everything in the bottom left. So that is going to be halted, but that, I guess, the sneaky attempt at a take there is going to allow this base to get uh, go up at the lower left. Huge engagement in the upper right-hand corner, clearing a lot of troops, though. And Jiraiya might end up losing more than he gained in the midst of this. Defilers are out. Plague a spot away from being upgraded. Sunken Colony gone. I don't see anything coming through this Nidus just yet. That Nidus is not long for life. A couple consumes. One Defiler down. Two Defilers down. And it looks like a big reinforcement group going to catch some of just primarily Zerglings that are getting wiped out rather rapidly. Not there to deal with the rest of this attack force. Several drones getting wiped out. And Jiraiya now way behind in supply. Master Ray has secured additional bases. And Jiraiya 
wiping out a huge base and just able to chew through everything. And honestly, I feel like Jiraiya could come back into this, but his macro a little bit behind. Master Ray at 182 supply, twice the supply of Jiraiya. Perhaps a lack of hatcheries, mostly, and maybe it's just building cheap units in the form of Zerglings. Ultralisks, I didn't even notice an Ultralisk Cavern in the background. Ultralisks starting to field. They don't have that armor upgrade critically, but Ultralisks might be the difference to go ahead and allow Jiraiya to sneak back into this because he's way behind the supply. There's Yes, there's a lot of Dragoons out, but they're pretty highly upgraded if they can just sit there, but it's going to be it's gonna be rough because this one o'clock base is being wiped out. Jiraiya does have a bank, it looks like. A lot of that bank being expended. However, I think Master Ray has sealed this by going ahead and capturing, and he does have Reavers there, by going ahead and capturing this five o'clock location, wiping out that one o'clock location and starting to wheelhouse around to potentially attack additional bases. Jiraiya taking a desperation hatchery in the bottom left that 9 o'clock base is still working. There's no gas there. And critically, I think it, the gas, he's got a big gas bank, but this gas might be the problem overall because this is depleted, uh, this is depleted, this is his one fully functional mining gas, and he's actually not mining out of it. A sneaky drone did manage to sneak there in that corner. It looks like Jiraiya diving into this 5 o'clock location with Zerglings, but there is a Reaver there. There's also a High Templar there. I think this is going to be cleaned up. Ultralisks making their way there as well. But I think this might be the last hurrah. Overall, Reavers wiped out, but plenty of Zealots. That's always, this is my favorite fight, is the Zealot versus the Ultralisk. That's like the most epic thing, like a guy with little laser blades dealing with this giant monstrosity in groupings. Root for him, depending on which race you favor, I guess. More Zerglings and Hydralisks look like they're trying to flood out some drones making their way through. Mastery piling in. This is a huge amount of Zealots. And they are damn near fully upgraded. They don't have the shield upgrades, but who cares? Uh, right now, Master Ray, near 200 supply. Jiraiya just throwing out Desperation Attack Forces. There's GG. So we'll move on to Game 2, an intense Game 1 overall, though. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.